Yo, 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 what up, though, man? I got certified Neek in the building. You know, Detroit, Michigan, gatekeeper. Number one on the list. You know what I'm saying? What, what they call you, Suge Knight of the City? How, how you feel about that? Nah, I don't feel no way about it. Nah? You, you, won't, you won't be helping people get out their contracts and shit, pulling up on people? Uh, I do good business. Yeah, Suge did, too. Yeah. Suge got a bad rap, though. Yeah, no, for sure, sure man. But right. appreciate you coming to Mogul State of Mind, man. Definitely admire your journey. Um, admire your, you know, saying how well just handling business, helping the Detroit sound just grow. You know, saying it's crazy being in Texas and hear people be in the studio like I want a Detroit beat. You know, saying hearing country ass people try to rap with Detroit lingo and cadence and flows is dope. Because you know, when I got to Texas, everything was still trying to do. Chop and screw, slow down. Now they speeding up. That's funny, ain't it? Yeah, it is. But hey, shout out to y'all, man, helping push the culture. So I appreciate that. Um, a little bit about yourself, man. What part of Detroit you from, and what was your upbringing like? Uh, East Warren, Cooper. Okay. Cooper Street, East Warren. Well, what was your upbringing like? As far as what? Like your parents, your dynamic things of that nature. Uh, I grew up a single parent. Um, okay. Well, my father was around, but he wasn't around. Gotcha. But I grew up my mother. No, were you only child? You my mother only child. I got a bunch of brothers and sisters. My on your dad's side, okay, okay. And so, like, growing up in East Warren, like, man, like, on, was that it? Was it tough over there? Like, what was that? What was it like? We all family. Most of all, everybody over there is family, so it really wasn't no big deal. Gotcha. You fight, play sports. Can you explain to me go. what I don't understand about the East Side? Like the fours, the fives, and the sixes. Is that how they go? Like, what the fuck is the sixes? There's like I don't know. I'm just making <laughs> shit. I'm just knowing his numbers. Foles and Fives. Fives. You the east side? Yeah, is, is that the east side thing? Or I don't know what, I never uh, understood. It is like, Foles is, uh, them, uh, that's a, a, a group of niggas from the city on the east side, different parts of the east side. Okay. And the Fives is like seven mile and like different shit like that. Them so it's a crew, it's a click, pretty much. Yeah, they, yeah, some, yeah. Okay, I, I couldn't, I never heard of it until I guess I was looking to the 42 Dub side of shit. It was right. trying to figure that out. That was a good segue. That was cool. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of that, though, like, I, I don't want to get to the artist side. I still want to get your 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 um, your um journey. What was your ambitions? Was it always music, like, coming up? Like, what was, what was you into? Uh, I was I was an athlete. I played basketball. Okay. And I was uh, in the streets. Okay. I, I always loved music. I was reading contracts since I was 12. Mm. So I, 13. What turned you to the street versus trying to really pursue basketball at the highest level? Uh, money. Mm. I, I had caught a case, so that blew that. That was over. Got you. I had caught a scholarship, uh, Central Michigan. I okay. was transferred to Michigan State, and I caught a, a case, and that was over. Oh, damn. Do you think you would have ended up in the streets if you would have had opportunities like with these NIL deals that college kids are able to get now? We can. Oh no! I would have still been doing sports. Yeah, for sure. It was easy money. That's easy. That's free money. Yeah. So you really ain't want to do that. If you get free money, you ain't about to go do nothing. You get some free money to well, do what you love to do as a kid. No, for sure. Well, so well, you said money. How did you get introduced to the streets? And I just hung around people older than me. I never hung around people my age. Gotcha. And I just, but I had jobs my whole life though, until I didn't want to work with nobody no more. I, I'm not built to work with people. Mm -hmm. My mental not really good to work with people. What about people working work, for you? Jobs anyway, working for other people. Mm -hmm. They don't really work that well. I ain't finna bust my ass for some pennies and they get all the money and the credit. Now, what about your employees that work for you? How do you uh, keep them from feeling that way like you feel for us people? I treat everybody like the same. I don't, money or none of that. Everybody the same with me. Yeah. So. Gotcha. Do you think it's important though, like, because not everybody meant to be a boss. Some people are good at taking something that already exists and making it better. Like, you know how you got some people, they get in the company and they really find passion moving up through the company. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like those people are important for your brand as well and what you're doing? Have you found those type of people? I feel like if you're passionate about something, you should always want to be the best of what you want to be, no matter what, if it's for you or for somebody else or whatever you're trying to do. That's the only way you're going to grow. Yeah. You can't half-ass do nothing. You're not going to have nothing. No matter if you work for yourself or somebody else. 
how do you handle an employee that's just doing enough to get a check? <laughs> they just gonna get enough. Hmm. You ever call somebody kind of you felt like milk in the clock? How you handle them? Uh, you ain't milking shit around me. Yeah. No ass will be out. That's when shit nice show up. Nah, that's like that's a, <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny perception. People just gave me that. I don't because of shit that I did to people and like stuff like that. Oh, so it's valid. So what did you do to I people? I wouldn't really say it's valid. I just don't I tolerate disrespect. Gotcha. Or I don't let nobody do nothing about around people around me. What's your biggest pet peeve or the most disrespectful thing in you that I set you off? Hmm? Like something that's disrespectful. Like, you know, like somebody got pet peeves, things yeah. that like to some other people that might be small, but to you is really disrespect. Like what's one thing that can quickly feel like disrespect to you? As a man or a woman? As, as a man. From a man. From, yeah. I don't mean anybody. As a man calling me a bitch or telling me he's stuck his dick. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. That's I think that's universal. yeah. It's up with my cousin. He like people calling out, saying that all the time to him. What? He enjoy people saying that to him all the time. He don't. He find it very respectful. It's different. Okay. I I respect him for it. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. But but have you ever dealt with that? Somebody actually did that to you. What? To, what call me a bitch? Yeah. And tell you. Yeah. Damn. And so like, does it hurt your feelings? Like, what makes you like uh, so angry? That, that, that something got to happen to you. I feel it. No, I feel it. Okay. So you you went into the streets. Like, did you ever get jammed up in the streets as far as like having to go to jail? Things yeah, of that nature? I never went to prison though. I just did a county time, fall case and stuff like that. I never went to prison. What what was the long, longest they just bid set you? Set me up and told on me. Damn. Yeah. How did that feel? Shit, I uh, I ain't feel like shit. I'm trying to get out of jail. I'm talking about when somebody told on you. Do you like do you feel anything towards that person? Yeah, you, how you gonna feel like somebody telling on you? You ain't gonna be happy a nigga told on you. I mean, because I say that because Rick Ross. He wasn't my homeboy though, so yeah. I couldn't feel like he hurt me or nothing like that. He wasn't my homeboy. Yeah. I was just a nigga I was doing business with. Gotcha. And he told on me and set me and got me set up. Because I saw Rick Ross do an interview, the real Rick Ross. Oh. And um, he was saying when he got told on and went to prison, at first he was mad, but then he realized, like, bro, I can't be mad. That just come with the game. It come with the game for sure. You know what I'm saying? Jail, robberies, death, all come with the game. Tell hey. niggas telling on you all come with the game. You, just, you can't make it a career. Ain't mm -hmm. nothing in the street gonna be, you ain't gonna last in nothing forever. But, if you have been through this, if you've been in the streets for your whole life and you never had a hiccup, something ain't right with you. Mm -hmm. It don't happen. So it's, it's, you don't know anybody in the game that was successful at it that never went to jail? I'm saying whether they went to jail, shot, dead, Told on some some gonna happen to you You're in the streets. Yeah. Hey, have you ever been robbed? Yep. What was that like? Take me through that day. Uh, <clears throat> it was like a weird situation. It, was, it wasn't me. Like it was like somebody stole something on my car, stole a car type shit, mm. type shit. Oh, so you never had like a kick though situation? No, somebody I never tried had to... a kick though. A house got shot up or something like that, but I ain't never you know, like shit like that. Damn, you just said that, like, that shit just... See, you live it. in Detroit, that shit gonna happen to you. If you in the street, something gonna happen. Yeah. Ain't nothing gonna... You're not gonna walk around, around this bitch squeaky clean. Like a nigga telling on me, that just happens. They told me, they tried to get me to tell on somebody else. Yeah. So, so at what point did you start getting to music? Here you are, you in the streets, you doing your thing. You was a, you know, former athlete. What, where did music come in at? I always loved music. I just spent all my money on music. You was a rapper first? Uh, I tried that shit, but I ain't really care for that shit. What was your rap name? I didn't have one. That's how you know I wasn't supposed to be doing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I ain't had no rap name. So you, so you got into the music. How, how did you get into it? Uh, trying to get out the streets. <laughs> you got to turn that shit to some some way. And then I had like I had a uh, tow truck company and shit like that. <laughs> so I just started wanting to spend my money on something else. And then I indirectly got into it. Somebody had wanted my help. Mm -hmm. uh, with some, uh, they ain't had no money to do certain shit and they needed my help. And then I started helping them and then they didn't know I was, they didn't know I knew nothing about me. They just thought I was just a nigga who had some money to help them. Mm -hmm. And then it just turned into that. Got you. From that. See, I recently interviewed Peanut and um, Peanut talked about Vezo. Um, 
And in that interview, he said he helped Vezo get out of the deal. Um, he said he was signed to some cops or something like that. Hmm? He, yeah, he said he was signed to two police officers and that he paid Vezo out that deal. And he advanced Vezo some money because Vezo was going to come sign with him. Vezo ran off, according to him, with the money. And he said, but because he loved Vezo, if you adjudicated in the streets, it wouldn't be no Vezo today. How would you handle an artist in that situation? Like, you have you ever, you advanced him some money trying to help him out in his career and they run off? What should Peanut do better to prevent that from happening? <laughs> uh, I don't know. When I, Every situation is different. You, I don't, you can't really, like, your relationship with artists or start, or people, period, be different from other people. So mm-hmm. you might love a person more and might let somebody get away with something that you might not let nobody get away with. Yeah. Or you, that's like you let your girl get away with something that you might not let your brother or sister get away with. Yeah. Or whatever it may be. Your, everybody's situation is different. So you can sit up here and say, like, I would have did this to him or did that to him, but it depends on how the relationship was. Well, not necessarily did to him, but, like, what, what some preventative measures do you put in place? Sign a contract. And then what happened? Because, I mean, somebody could sign a contract and still run off. Are you going to run off? I own whatever you do. I'm gonna, whatever you do, I'm going to make the money off of it. You're not going to make yeah. no money off of it. Were, were you shot when that came out? Because it seemed like the city was in no. the uproar. You weren't shot? Mm-mm. Why not? Because, I mean, Vezo rap about taking care of his people. <laughs> like, that's kind of his music. He, you know, take care of your people. <laughs> that's funny. What, what you asking me? I'm saying, like, you said you weren't shot. I was asking where you shocked about that coming about, out about Vezo because when you hear his music, a lot of Vezo music is about being solid by your people, doing right by your people. Um... Dealing with artists and like music ain't nothing. Um, it's nothing you. Everything is like open for happening. Yeah. Nothing is off limits. A lot of shit that happen in music. Yeah, it's all about paperwork. So even with Vezo situation with him or whatever, I don't know, or anybody else, if you ain't got nothing in paperwork or got something going on, it's bound to happen. Everybody got fucked in music. Yeah, some way, shape, or form. Even the niggas who got the money, even the niggas who the talent, everybody got played some way, shape, or form in music. It's just you putting the provisions in to make sure it don't happen to you. So what's the time that you got played in music? <clears throat> See, I really never really got played. Shit sure, night. Get your shit off. Go ahead. But I done let people get away with shit thinking they're getting away with something. Mm. But you ain't forgot. Mm-mm. It's dangerous. I'll let you think you're getting off. And- you saw how you looked in the camera right there when you said that. It like you were sending a message. Mm-mm. No. Nah. I'm good with everybody. I don't really have, I don't have problems. Like, I'm not one of the people that really have no uh, issues with nobody. Gotcha. People really, I'm, people know me. Yeah. I don't really, like, I don't really, I don't rap beef or, I'm not a rapper. I don't get up and all that. I feel it. Now, when it comes to like the label, 2F, that's there for the family? Yes, yeah, it? the family, it's the family circle. No, it's, it's the circle. You partner with, it's my, two of you. It's my cousin, his name is Pootie. Pootie, okay. Yeah. So how y'all come together to come up with the family? Uh, it just happened. Spending money, doing shit. Mm. Believing in the same thing. Gotcha. Type shit. He was on the west side, I was on the east side. I was doing it with the east side, he was doing it with the west side. Gotcha. Who was you know, the that's first? That's when west side was like, east side and west side niggas didn't really. I remember them days. Fuck with niggas because of some shit that was going on with the music on the east side and the west side of Detroit, so you, which you probably familiar with. Yeah. So niggas didn't really do the east side and the west side shit. We was like the first niggas to really like make it a thing to make it like solid. Gotcha. And that's my that's my family, so. Now, who were the first artists that y'all signed under the label? Uh, the first artists um, overall was like the band gang, the shred gang. Yeah. And after that came uh, Draco and Bino and Nook and... Like, even people that wasn't signed to us, we helped and did. Like, we brought Empire to Detroit. Mm-hmm. For real. Like, we helped with the DZs, JR, All Star JR, Sada, Ray. Um, not too many people that 
came through here, we ain't had nothing to do with it in some way, shape, or form. Some people would say T Grizzly is responsible for the sound of Detroit finally breaking out to the world. T was the uh T was the first uh nigga from the hood, like from the city that was in tune with the trenches that was from the hood. Mm-hmm. That was in the trenches. Not saying nobody else wouldn't or what they didn't or didn't do, but he re- niggas related to him. And you can see T. You couldn't see nobody else at that mm-hmm. time. You know what I'm saying? Like, we started fucking with T from being in the strip club. Like, we met him in the strip club type shit, and that shit just grew. He started coming on our east side, fucking with us, and fucking with people and shit like that. And you couldn't really see, uh, uh, like, people that got major deals before him mm-hmm. from the city. Nowhere. You would see Proof. Yeah. A nigga like Proof, you know what I'm saying? But he wasn't, he was in a, uh, it was, he was in a group of, and he was Eminem's best friend. Yeah. So it didn't mean the same that was to a nigga who had his own deal and had his own situation. Like, T was the first nigga from the city that was uh, doing interviews and shit with the shit that was building up in Detroit from the uh, Joe McFashion and uh, For Show and Hip Hop Lab and all the little stuff we had going on here. He was like the first nigga. Yeah. Like, so he was a part of the culture. He's a part of the upbringing. Everybody else, nobody else, you couldn't say that about. Do you feel like the city still su- support T like they once did or did it, or has the city kind of turned their back on him? Uh, I don't think that, like, I don't know that they turned their back on him. He just, he uh, elevated. <clears throat> and elevation creates separ- separation. You know what I'm saying? He had other shit he was doing and stuff like that. With, uh, what's going on right now? He been uh, he been back here a lot. Yeah. So he been like popping out. We've been going out at clubs and different shit and schools and all that. They've been showing him hella love. So we've been we've been going and shit. And the reactions even getting. He got a. They've been fucking with him. Now we know at one time Sada was signed to T, and that didn't work out, and and things like that happened. But what was your take on that? Because for a minute, like Sada was one of my favorite artists out of Detroit, and it was he's dope. not no more. He still is. I, I, I listen to Sada a lot. I, I fuck with Sada. What's the last Sada song you listen to? Um, he just dropped a new tape. He did. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple of songs on that boy. Come on, man. He just put. He just dropped it. Uh, I just got a Sada I playlist. Was just asking. I was just asking. You know what I'm saying? My shit with. I'll tell you my favorite side of tracks. All right. You know what I'm saying? The shit a, with King. A good that's a good segue. Yeah. You know, I like I like King. Don't join with him and King Von. He he got another song with King Von. It ain't now, though. Yeah. I'll play it for you. Man. Yeah. I, I rock with that joint. I like him and Skillet Tate. Mm. That, that, that one hard. Um, shit, Barty Air Bounty. Is that the, is that the mixtape or the song? I think it's the, the tape. Yeah, so you know, Sada is definitely in one in my playlist. But do you feel like he on a decline? Didn't you ask me something before that? I or forgot that was it. A question. I fucked you up, and you forgot you the question. You did. And it's cool. Uh, do I feel like he on a decline? I think Sada uh, on some real shit. I think Sada uh, just found himself as an artist through all what's going on with him. He got his own. He lost his pops and a lot of other yeah. shit transpired between him and he, you know, he trying to find his way. Cause I feel like I thought when Nicki jumped on that whole lot of Chopper remix, mm-hmm. I thought that was about to go to go make segue him to the next level. Mm-hmm. And it didn't. Some people speculate that whole gay community shit that he was having on this shit on the Twitter, like they found some old tweets or some shit he said when he was young and he wouldn't apologize for it. What? He had some like old tweets from when he was younger. It was kind of like gay bashing, saying some shit. Oh, and, I it, hip. and it got exposed. It, people were trying to expose him. And he was like, look, I was a kid when I say that shit. Oh, yeah, I ain't know nothing about so that. So some people was like, that's kind of where it fell off. He refused to kind of like apologize and just say, I'm sorry as a kid. He didn't apologize? No, he just said, fuck, I was a kid. But it wasn't like no apology. That's how people was taking it. And some people say that's what kind of killed his career because you went kind of against some powers that have shut some shit down. Oh, you can't say, I, you can't say, I can't let nobody, 
You can't say his career done. He just got a platinum and a gold record. Well, I ain't saying it was done, but he, he, I don't know no nigga from here that got a platinum or gold record that ain't have a major deal. I think he the first nigga. Mm. So he got a platinum and a gold record, and, and Block Party about to be gold. So I got that ain't gold. Yeah, I would have thought this I shit was bingo. It's like uh, that's when the streaming shit switched over. So yeah, I'm about to have another play. Yeah. So yeah, that's when they go go too. But I wouldn't say uh like I don't know nobody else that from under them circumstances got a go in a platinum record. Yeah. So I mean, definitely great accolades. I don't feel like he. Uh, I don't feel like his career is like killed. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. So what do you think he need to do to get back to where gotta, he was? You gotta just get in the studio and stay focused. Mm. You know what I mean? You gotta stay focused. You gotta block out the world when shit don't. Like when shit don't go your way or shit you dealing with shit in music, you gotta really can't focus on what nobody else got going on. Yeah. Like that's what a lot of artists, a lot of older artists get caught up in what they see on Instagram with other artists and shit. And that shit really be fake. But start comparing yourself, start fucking you, you up. Get, get, get to fucking with you mentally. Yeah. You chasing your own success and you, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to keep coming, especially when you coming from a city like Detroit. It's hard to come with something every summer. Like you have an anthem every summer that plays every summer, or you got a record that lives through the city every year. You know, and Sada didn't have something that lived through the city for at least seven years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have like Black Party for us lasted for three years and some change. They still play Black Party on the radio and everything, and not to mention a whole lot of choppers and the countless other records he got that have been on the summer. He didn't have like seven, eight years straight. Yeah. Of continuously bringing out some for the summer or the fall for the winter that has lasted for seven, eight years. That's hard to do when you compare it to people like Big Sean or, you know what I'm saying, niggas that have major deals. Sada never had a major deal. Mm. People don't understand it. So they, was it because it wasn't presented or it just wasn't the right deal and you turned well, it down? Just, he, t- he took other situations and then, you know what I'm saying, and he was in them situations. You know, once you sign your name, you in them bitches. So with the whole T Grizzly joint, he was kind of Stuck in that. He was kind of... Uh, see, people be, like, the, that whole thing with the T. Gritty situation, like, that was really uh, the manager. Oh, JB. JB. That was, he was never really signed to T. So then why did he fall out with T there? I ain't about to get in. That ain't my Oh, okay. Thing. So that's something different. That ain't, ain't nothing for me to speak on. Because it seemed like T just a nigga would be like, hey, you don't want to be here no more. Cool, my nigga. I'll let I you mean, up T let there. him go. Yeah. Or whatever, but a situation like that's a whole like that's a personal thing between them or whatever. It ain't really like that deep, but yeah. it's deep enough. But that ain't for me to speak on. Got you. That's um, the thing. I, I, people, I was shocked to see Skiller working with T because how much you know, Sada Revere, Skiller. You know, what I'm saying you talk about him as his brother. What do you feel like that dynamic of him being with T Grizzly, and how did that come about? And, and and skill of growth, because he going stupid right now. So, what's, what's the exact question? Skiller going with T Grizzly, although he used to, he's still cool. I guess he's still cool with Sada. I don't know what that re- relationship like. So, how does that work? <laughs> Skiller being with T Grizzly. I mean, he that's Skiller and Sada are still brothers. They, yeah. It's just, it's music. Got you. I don't like, they not beefing because he doing, he did a take with uh, T. Yeah. And Skiller don't feel no type of way towards Sada because of that. Or Sada, if that is, if it's if it's a thing, it's not, we ain't none of us feel out about it. We got fucked up by Chicago politics. That's what it is. That whole pick a side. If I'm, if you cool with me, you uh, can't work with them. I don't know. Detroit got its own world. Detroit ain't like no other city. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I don't really. Uh, Skiller and. Skiller, do you do a song or a tape or whatever with a nigga? T and Sada has never had a fight or, yeah. you know what I'm saying, ain't no bloodshed or, so there's nothing to where it's like they have a beef. I don't think, they don't have a beef. T doesn't have an actual issue with Sada. Gotcha. So, oh. and that's why it makes the tape even funnier because we I named it, we came up with the name. I knew that people was gonna think it was gonna be like a shit storm about, Shit like that. That's not even, it's just about music. It ain't got nothing to do with Sada. Sada's not mentioned on that tape or like the situation with them two or yeah. none of that. Nobody talks about Sada or T or Skiller. Skiller's not even that kind of guy. Yeah. Skiller's his own man. So Skiller not doing it for money or T didn't do it for money. They genuinely fuck with each other. That's dope. And, they, and T and Sada situation was before Skiller. 
So let's say Skillet decided to have a birthday party. Come, and she, come. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. So it's, he, it's cool. He's not gonna not invite him because he's coming, or he's not gonna invite him because he's coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just did the 313 concert. Mm, I saw that. Sada was there, T was there, we was there, Draco. We brought everybody that was with us. Draco and Reno, Nook. Like we we came in my house full. Gotcha. It ain't really like a uh when I see you, I'm gonna kill you or whoop you type of situation. Like, we were just in the same room. Uh, they was on one side, or you know what I'm saying? It was a bunch of moving parts, but we was all in the same building together. Okay. So when we put that tape together and did that tape, we wouldn't know uh, intentions on nobody doing no whole shit or no funny shit. It just came it came together organically for real. I executive produced the tape, and we came up with it. We the tape got done quick. We sat there and didn't knock the records up. It wasn't mm-hmm. like on no anti hate side of shit or fuck side of type of deal. Or nothing like that. Them, they Skiller still love T. Uh, Sada and Sada loves Skiller. It ain't no like I hate you or like I fuck you or no. Yeah, like it being a label exec. A lot of artists use like <clears throat> like it's a conspiracy theory that labels like when the artists get killed because it generates more money. That again. That, Right now, it's conspiracy going around amongst artists where artists think, or fans or artists think that labels like when their artists, well, not even say like, but they benefit more when their artists die, that it generates more sales, and that labels take out life insurance policies on their artists. Mm-hmm. Can you explain if, if a business does take out life insurance policy? I mean, do you do that on your artists? Do you take out life insurance policies on mm-hmm. That's another question. Uh, I understand it. Like, uh, people get a bad rap from that, but being a rapper or being in music is like the most dangerous job in the world. Not even a rapper, just the, everybody in music, period. Like, it's a target. So, you like, that's like the worst job in the world, dangerous mm-hmm. job in the world. So, when you, when people be like, when labels and people take policies out on the artists, it's because this is the most dangerous job in the world. Mm-hmm. So, any day, like, that's why I tell artists when they coming up, like labels are gambling on you. This is why labels don't want to spend money on niggas. They rather go get a nigga who's not really from the hood and paint him up and act like he's from the hood and make him think he tough and all that type of shit. It's like a six nine type of thing. Mm-hmm. They rather do something like that than give a nigga money that's really from the hood and have to take the risk of waking up every day worry about this nigga getting dead, getting murdered, or going to jail. Like labels don't make the money. They don't. They like once. It's kind of worse when you go to jail than when you get killed. Because mm. when they go to jail, the motion stop. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard to get shit done and you in jail and you can't really get fucked around with or nothing like that. It's, it's kind of tough with labels and artists who get that money, especially when they just give you. You give a nigga a million dollars or $1.5, $2 million, and he go to jail. Why was 6 9 then celebrated when he came home for being a snitch? But you got somebody like, I mean, I'm saying celebrating meaning his streams went up, his lives went up, he broke records, he major record deal, a lot of money. And then you have somebody like Bobby Smurder who come home, shit was dead, flat. Real nigga wasn't celebrated. Uh, Real nigga celebrate you. Labels don't celebrate you. Hmm. If you go to jail for being a stand-up nigga, when you come home, real nigga celebrate you. The labels don't celebrate you. White people don't care about no niggas snitching. They don't care if you snitch or be real. They don't give mm-hmm. a fuck. They want the money. They don't care what you did. They not in, they not, labels not here to be your friend. That's yeah. what people don't understand. They don't care what you do. They don't care about, all they care about is their investment. They don't care about what you did or done do or they rather you didn't do none of the shit that you rap about. They don't want to invest their money into a nigga that really killing niggas or really ran around with dope or, you know what I'm saying? Really in the hood, sitting in the hood. They don't want nothing to do with that. For real. They want you to be out the way as much as possible, not doing nothing to what you say. Are you an advocate for snitching? Like, is there ever a situation for it? Time out. What? No, I'm asking that because, like, Charleston White hit the scene and he created this movement where you've seen a lot of people coming out saying it's okay to tell. You hear the story I just told you? Somebody somebody set me up and tried to get me to tell on somebody, too? Yeah, I heard you. Yeah, so. I'm just making sure you ain't changing your mind. They tried to get my mama to tell on somebody, though. They call my Damn. mom and I tell her to tell us like, I'm not so, telling them no nigga. 
So even if it's the person dead, like Gangster Williams, Terrence Gangster Williams told on dead people he got a life sentence. I don't advocate no snitching. I'm not being around no nigga that told. Gotcha. That's you right. could tell on me or nobody around me. But you're doing legitimate business, yeah. so it's nothing to tell. You might make a mistake. There you go. I feel it. But how you feel about Charleston White? He funny to me. Yeah. I, he just a funny nigga to me. Like, and, he, and sometimes he be saying some shit that makes sense, but his message is so <laughs> fucked up. It's just funny. Like, the nigga really funny to me. Yeah. He, like, he a funny guy to me. Like, the shit he be doing is wild, but you can't, he a snitch. Mm. He he a happy snitch. Can a civilian be a snitch? No, a civilian can't be a snitch. Because that's what he look at himself as. He ain't, I ain't a street nigga. I'm just like, you sell dope in my neighborhood. I don't want your ass there. I'm telling. You fucking up my neighborhood. He, you are, he a super, super, he a super different kind of civilian then. Yeah. Because you can't be running around getting on live with 30,000 guns and talking about you going to smoke a nigga and blow his head off and arguing with rappers and <laughs> their kids and all this crazy shit and then say, you a civilian. Uh, who is that? That's the type of shit. Y'all gotta have a gun in here. No, we got one in here. Y'all yeah. need to have a gun out for shit like this. I got one. He do too. I didn't say for me. I'm saying he peeking at the door and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, with me, he with me. Oh, shit. And you talking about we need a gun for your person? No, y'all just looking at this like y'all about to go down. Y'all looking weird. That's. <clears throat> Don't fall. We gonna pick oh, it up. Man. I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you gotta stop being scared. Uh, I'm like, yeah, that's what but yeah, he a funny nigga to me though. Yeah, uh, I fuck I'm, with Charleston. Huh? I fuck with Charleston. What you mean? Like he cool. He funny. Like I mean, I interviewed him. I interviewed him before. You know, because I'm in Dallas, and him oh. and my, my older brother best friends. Cause my brother from Fort Worth. Wait, what y'all doing here? Your brother is best friend with the snitch. I mean, shit. This is before Charleston. He knew Charleston before Charleston started getting on the internet. So he's still the best friend after he had snitch. I guess. Yeah. You know, don't say you gay. I you said gay. yeah. Damn. How you feel about that? It don't matter to me. It ain't got done. I, I'm. I stay at home. I mind my business. Except for when I turn <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> yeah, I turn on the camera, I talk shit. <laughs> but I'm in the birds. But Car Charleston cuts me out probably like once a month. He go in on me. Be like, hey man, fuck your bitch ass brother. I hate that mogul media nigga. He just go in on me all the time. Damn, why Why he do the interview if he don't like you? Because it's our internet. In person, Charleston is completely different. Complete 180. Quiet, respectful, chill, don't talk loud. See, that's all I said was right now. Yeah, but, but when he says a character, you can really see the character. It's like literally like, he, you know like how calm and reserved you are? No, this is really me though. That's no, how I'm I get, No, so I'm not talking about that. I'm saying like by natural how calm and reserved you are, you, you, as soon as the camera and lights come on, it's like showtime for him. And then you see him getting all to, oh man, yeah, yeah, say no, nah, fuck that nigga. He just tried to say the most outlandish I shit. I know, that's what I said, it's funny. Yeah. Me, but I'm like this all the time though. Oh, got you. I'm not really, I don't really, I'm not an actor. Right. Uh, I, feel, I feel it. I'm like this like it ain't upset. Okay. Um, so I know you got you stunner girl. Tell me a little bit about her, man. Like how did you you meet her? Like and y'all come about? Uh band gang, Lonnie Bands brought her around. Okay. Uh through his travels on uh on the road. Cause he uh he's uh he the, he one of the rappers that like get on the road by itself and go, uh do music. So he'd be out of town, going to different states, doing features and setting up shop wherever he at. Mm. He liked the Highlander of rap. So he'd go anywhere by itself, do whatever, whatever. And he ended up bumping to her. They got the, they got in a relationship. He started her rapping for mm. real. Like she had a song, I think I remember too, but then he like started really pushing her to be a rapper. And then he came, brought her back here and she moved here and then we took it a hell of a, we did some music with her with a hell of a, and some, we had a bunch of shit with her, and then it just took off. And at this time, that's when Cuban Dolls started coming to Detroit as well, kicking them with her, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I recently interviewed Cuban Dog, and mm -hmm. we, we talked about it, the whole Rocky Bad Dog Cage incident. 
Um, being that you had a relationship with Stunner, I'm quite sure being who you are, you got a relationship with Rocky. Like, how did you feel when you heard about that? And how? Um, uh, um, uh, Rocky was our homegirl mm. uh, before we ever knew Stunner. Um, she was our homegirl. She used to be around a lot of time. And um, that situation was very unfortunate. Yeah. For real. Uh, that could have really been prevented. Uh, that's after, like, that was on a, uh, Rocky was going at uh, Molly. Yeah. And Molly was hanging with Cuban. And they had some static going on. And Cuban, uh, Really started hanging around, like talking to Stunner, and uh, Rocky didn't like it, and that brought and she started going at Stunner because of her being cool with uh, mm. that situation, and just ended up going left. That's crazy. Like seeing that, like that incident of, I guess, what the story Rocky got booked for a fake show, and that situation happened to her, and Lando was with her, right? That mm -hmm. was her manager. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah, that was fucked up. So like with your artists who move around by itself, do y'all ever like have a conversation like, bro, you know, stay dangerous, like, like, cause this shit can happen a, a lot. Yeah, anybody in rap know anything can happen to you. You as a rapper, like you, you saying the shit you saying in songs, niggas want to know. Mm -hmm. Niggas want to see everybody not not a fan of you, don't care about you, don't give a fuck about none of that. Especially if you got jury and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You going state to state, city to city. They think you ain't got no gun or you ain't protecting yourself or you ain't moving how you should move. They're going to try you. But I feel like any nigga that's a rapper or a female, like you should go anywhere. If you go another nigga backyard, you better be prepared. Yeah. Anything that happened, that can happen at home though. When you go outside, you got to know. That's all I said. Rapping is the worst job in the world. It's benefits to it, but it's the most dangerous job in the world. You got to know, even when you're at home, if you don't go outside the right way, a nigga will get on your ass. So do you enjoy being, knowing that it is that, what enjoyment do you find as an executive in the, being in the music? Mm -hmm. Like, if knowing that rap is so dangerous, as an executive, what joy do you find being in this field knowing that it's so much danger? Uh, the joy is knowing you can change people's lives, for me. <laughs> Seeing something start from nothing and turn to something, that's what it is for me. That's dope. I like progress. You said something earlier that stuck out. You said, this is you. This is who you are. Some people don't, like, put on the show when the lights and the cameras come on. They stay themselves. Stunner is on, ba on Baddies West. Mm -hmm. And we, you see the clips from that show. It's, it's toxic. No, they I haven't watched all... not one episode. You yeah. haven't seen any clips, though? Uh -huh. Okay. I ain't why I don't watch this. Well, on the clips, you just see a bunch of women fighting. And you know, stunning girl look like she be quick to ready to throw them hands. But that's her. That's her. In real life. That's her in real life, for sure. She called me uh when they was filming. So I never watched, I didn't watch not one episode, but while they was filming, she called me. Yeah. And while they was filming, they like did some bullshit on the show to her. Like for real. Like she had called me one night and said Tommy and them uh brought some girls from outside the show to Russia. Oh uh, yeah, damn. On some shit like, so they was having like, like that's really her though. She ain't like trying to put on for TV or trying to fight cause she want to fight. I mean, trying to get a check. She really fucked up in here. Hmm. Just brought how she was brought up. She got like a rough upbringing. Yeah, she had right? a real. She she had a real uh, wild life coming up. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. So I, she ain't really acting or not like that. So like, what's the 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 working relate? Is she signed to your label? What is it like? Uh, -uh. No, nah, not no more. No, nah. she uh she indie. She's mm. doing the situation. I still kick it with her and all that type of shit. Yeah, like I help her or whatever when she need me. But she uh working on shit right now, for real. She was signed to Epic. She ain't signed no more. And they let her go. Yeah, they let her go. It's tough. They let her take the music. They let her go. Why why won't you watch the episodes of Bad East West? That just ain't shit I'm into. I don't really watch that much TV anyway. Yeah. I'm in the studio 24-7 or on the road. So gotcha. I watch sports and like Law & Order SVU and shit like that. Okay. I don't watch like... Uh, <laughs> she hate that. She's scared of that show. Uh, <laughs> I only watch like SVU and, okay. and I watch sports. Like I don't watch TV for real. I'm in the studio all the time. Like, so who, who you got to pick? 
pick to win in that basketball the, the uh, NBA championship. I got? don't know. It's weird. This is this is a, this is a wild playoff run. Yeah, because I ain't expect Miami to get past Milwaukee. Yeah, that fucked me up. Yeah, Man, I, uh, I ain't got nobody right. Now. I'm just watching as a fan right now. I'm a Brian fan. I hate LeBron fans. I hate y'all. Why? I hate y'all. It's better things to hate like Cowboy fans. I don't fuck with them neither. He a Cowboy fan. See what I'm saying? Hand in hand. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Why you don't like Brian fans though? Because y'all don't got no sense. What we missing? Oh, logic is fucked. That he better and than Michael Jordan? is my favorite franchise in music, I mean, in sports. That's my favorite franchise. You hate it when he went and there. In, in, in the Yankees. So you hate it when LeBron went to the Lakers? Yeah, I didn't feel it. I fuck, I, I respect his greatness, but I hate, I hate his fans. I was just saying, what we do wrong? Putting him over Michael Jordan and no, Kobe? I don't got nothing to do with that. You can't put him over Kobe. But, like, that shit's stupid. But Definitely can put him over y'all Kobe. Got, y'all logic is fucked up. Like, y'all not human. Like, y'all don't live on, the, in, on Earth. Y'all live on another planet. Like, that shit is weird. Like, LeBron got real people that's like, y'all make a nigga don't like LeBron, and that's fucked up. But I don't <laughs> know, like, y'all just fucked up in the head. Like, the shit y'all be coming up with, the shit y'all be saying, like, that nigga is a grown man with a dick. It's like, grown man be like, chasing this man down. Like, that shit just don't make no sense. So you enjoy listening to Skip Bayless in the morning when he bring up LeBron? Hell no, he a hater. See, I respect him. Okay. But you just don't like the fans. The fans just don't make it realistic. Y'all just say the shit that just don't be like, y'all love him too much. Like, y'all, yeah. y'all not objective for him. Like y'all just believe anything he say, like the like shit he do, like it's just, he, it's just always an excuse. His stats just make everything right, and that's not right. Like that's not, you know. See y'all, y'all logic is bold. Like y'all, y'all eyes see what you see, but y'all don't <laughs> want to be real because y'all love him. Like yeah, I mean, I, I, maybe I am delusional, bro. Why he better than Kobe? Um, I feel like every team he go on, he could take at least younger Brian. He older now, but I feel like you could put him anywhere, and he immediately make that team a championship contending team. Um, That's a good thing? Huh? So you think going to the team to team is a good thing? I think it can be, especially if you're going to not major, always going to a major market, like landing in Cleveland, nothing, and helping them get there. I think that's dope. See what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? What? The shit y'all be saying is wild. I'm saying he did that, though. The nigga went to 18 teams. That's cool. He fuck up superstars. Y'all don't understand this? He destroys superstars. Why who, Kyrie? Any nigga that got game, that's that's their own player. That's don't LeBron only good with spot up jump shooters, hustle players, slashers, or rebounders. That's the only thing LeBron play good with. He don't play good with superstars. I'm cool. That's just like playing Street Fighter, and I just use see, the one punch. See what I'm saying? Y'all not objective. That's not being real. The nigga, look what he did to my nigga Russ. Now mm-hmm. Russ go play the Clippers. He back to normal. He fuck niggas up. Look what he did to Kevin Love. He made Kevin Love a spot up jump shooter. How mm-hmm. you make a nigga that do twenty and twenty or twenty five and thirty a spot up jump shooter? Hey. How you take a nigga like Isaiah Thomas that took the Boston Celtics there into the finals to can't get a job in the NBA? Mm. He was averaging 30 points a game with the, with the Celtics. He go play with LeBron, he can't even, he didn't have a job. He don't it, have a job no more. And that's LeBron fault. He fucked your career. I, I feel like- Kyrie knew better. He got the fuck on. Kyrie don't know Chris Bosh, he was averaging 25 and 17. He go play with LeBron, he averaging 15 points. And he was the scapegoat. Him and Mario Chalmers was the scapegoat in Miami. But he got a ring. And See? Kevin Love got a ring. See? This is what I be saying yeah. about Brian Fitz, y'all. Just, I'm, I'm just saying, saying you just state the shit that matter. I don't care if you win or just making people, it's, it's about winning. He's a, I feel like he's the great team player. I don't think Kobe but then you watch him on, you'll watch him in the game, he a great team player, but you'll watch him in the game, don't check his man, and then look at another nigga like, why you ain't step up and check the nigga? But you watch, he'll let, 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 let nigga go right past him, and then look at the nigga like, well, dude, what are you doing? He'll see rebound and look at the rebound and look at it like, you're not gonna get it? I've never seen LeBron do that in you the game. You a fucking liar. <laughs> you a fucking liar. I ain't never seen LeBron do that in the game. Man, I, man, don't do that. See, that's what I'm saying. Y'all not being real. That's not being real. <laughs> he do, he a crybaby ass nigga. And I fuck I with that. him. As I like, give that. I fuck I with him. He's a legend. He's great at what he did. He's doing, he's a stat stuffer. So that just yeah. make y'all love him. That's what it is. I don't feel like he, he earned his stats. I don't think he, I'm not saying he didn't earn them, like but he's a stats stuff. Russell Westbrook is a stats stuff. No, the nigga is 6'3". The nigga plays point guard. The nigga is playing at the top of the key. He runs from the top of the key, down and gets the rebound. How yeah. you stand your how you pack, how you stand hey, your man, stuff? He, just get he check everybody. And if he get a ring, I'll shut up. But that I don't, don't think count. See, that don't see. Only way, only way individual stats we matter is be playing golf, one-on-one sports. That's the only thing that you can depend on yourself. Everything else is a team effort. That's like right now, we're doing this interview right now. Yeah. If he don't do sound check, you can't hear us. 
If he's not doing audio, he can't hear it. That means you the champion and him mean he that mean he don't his job means less. But if I tell him to do the audio and when he's sitting in the back and all some of the audio gone because he keep turning it over, uh, we don't get an interview. And that's Russell Russell, bro. No. See, the people know it's you, so they look at it, look at it as you. So all the moving part com, parts around it don't matter because they look at it as you. Gotcha. So when they don't do something right, it's your fault. It's their fault. When it go right, it's you to get the wins. That's how it is in music. Yeah, that's, that's normally how it is, yeah. Yeah, so that's not right. That's not a, that's not a team. That's not being part of a team. I mean, but that's just like a quarterback. I mean, they win the game. They give it all the credit to the quarterback. Right. You lose, it's put on them. Right. Fortunately, that's the nature of the game. LeBron the game. fans not objective. Well, let's put it like this, and I see where your heart is if you really a stand-up guy. Are you a Detroit Lions fan? Fuck no. How, Sway? Because I'm not a fan of the Fords. Oh, okay. So I, I feel it. They're not gonna never put no money into the team. The, the, the Lions just sold off for the next thirty years mm. because of the Silverdome. The Silverdome was the biggest stadium in the world. Now we, they shrink it down to the Ford Field, so now they're sold out for the next thirty years. They don't have to put a winning product on the field because they already made the money. So they just get niggas minimum niggas and then just put a product out there and we get the same shit every year. So you don't feel like next year they elevating from where they were this year? We had Megatron and Matt Stafford. And and Dominican Sue. And the Dominican Sue. And you could keep naming them. And we I mean, did. when we was going to the playoffs, we, no, we, 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 we were just no, penalized. We, we was we, terrible. We went to have maybe two, three years the whole time he was here. Niggas blame Matt Stafford the whole time he was here. He go to the Rams, and I told niggas he's one of the best quarterbacks ever. He leave here, go to the Rams, win a championship first year. Too shy. Too shy. It's the Fords. We don't put winning product out. How can you be a fan of something you know can't, we're not going to put? Yeah, no, it's an abusive relationship for sure. Uh, I mean, I get it. I ask myself all the time. Like, why do you want to be a Alliance fan? Just because you live here? That don't make you, that don't mean you got to be well, a fan. Well, I'm in Texas, this. so it's been a couple but of times. But you from here? Yeah. So you a fan, that's what I'm saying, you a fan from here because you from here? Probably so, yeah. That don't mean that. Probably so. Because like you being loyal to a bitch, you know, fucking every nigga in the world. You going to meet her because you know, because you started with her? Oh, that's true. You got your kids, your baby, that's your baby mama, so you're gonna beat her anyway, no, she fucking your homeboy. It's toxic, bro. I know. Don't have a don't you shouldn't be but toxic. But it's mine and I'm sticking by it. Yeah, that's some toxic shit. <laughs> that's sad. But, don't go out like that. But to to end on it, um, for artists who looking like to get y'all attention, how do they do it now? Like how do get you my seen? Attention. I'm straight. You done. So you're not signing <laughs> no more artists, you over it? <laughs> Like, no, I don't know, man. It's just got to be something I want to do. Yeah. I got my hands full. I got a bunch of artists. I do a lot of shit. I co-produce. I executive produce. I mix. Like, I do a lot of shit. Oh, so you really in there. In yeah, there for I'm sure. in the studio 24-7. I got it. I got, I don't want no more artists. So I pop my artists, my new artists I got around me. That's yeah. just being me. I don't want to hold nobody's career. I don't want 20 niggas signed to me and tell you I got you next year. And another nigga blow up and then, but oh, I got you next year. Like, I don't want to do that. I got enough new artists of my own. Yeah. That I got to pop. That's my personal goal. Gotcha. So you can be talented and all that, but I just can't see myself putting my people that I got around me in front, putting you in front of them. That just don't make sense to me. A nigga told me to do that one time too. Damn. Like you just bet everything on me. Fuck them. <laughs> nigga crazy. He's supposed to be the engineer. That's so fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, shit. The nigga asked me, can you be the engineer? And then told me like, fuck all them. Like, Give me the ball. Let me run with the ball. Like, on some crazy shit. He like, fuck all of them. I'm the one. But he was like a scoring girlfriend, though. He had a lot of shit that happened to him in music. Oh, shit. So he was like, he came up. He was a better bruised man. So he out of the picture. He gone. Yeah, I don't know. He was never with me anyway. You know? Oh, gotcha. He was the engineer. Well, I tell you what, man. It's dope what you're doing. I, I got to do another Detroit. Oh, you know what? I got to ask you. Okay. What, what I got to do, I got to make sure. more crazy toxic questions? Well, no, not toxic. Well, this may be toxic, but the D, the Detroit gatekeeper list. Yeah, we deserve to be number one. Yeah, I, I put y'all up there number one. Who should be number one now? I, I got to do question. some research. Because I don't like what you said about LeBron. See, that's, so now you, see, that's, see, that's personal. <laughs> so, How you making it personal? I mean, that's, that's the LeBron shit. I can't hurts. be real. It hurts. You're not a Lions fan, so I just don't feel like you really feel And I city. like what LeBron I'm doing. I'm watching. I was happy what they did last night. Yeah. I'll, no, that's my favorite franchise. Then you didn't say the Tigers. You said the Yankees. What? Do you at least like the Red Wings? No. I mean, they cool. They won. 
I never been to a hockey game. What the fuck I got to like them for? Bro, you got to go to one. It's straight. I want to go to one, but I've never been to one. You, you got the money, bro. Get right on the glass. Why you said that? Rich it up. I ain't got... I ain't, I ain't, ice and ice. Makes sense. Nah. But Ronnie Ill is my homeboy. That's my homeboy. Okay. I've never been to one of their games. That's my homeboy. So who you think should be top five on the list if we drop the Detroit Gatekeeper list right now? Uh, Me, Pootie, me, Pootie, and Pootie and Eek. That's it. So nobody else just... <laughs> That's nobody else up there with y'all? That's a great list. You know, what you think about that list? I no, let me stop playing, though, because people will start hating me the more they already do. Uh, I feel like it's a lot of people... <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> it's a lot of people doing a lot of shit though in the city though. Like we've grown so much as a culture and found we we finally building something here. Yeah. Like not, not motherfuckers want to come here and fuck with us. Facts. They didn't want to come here. They we just have to go outsource. Now we're getting a lot of shit in source. Mm. So I can say like Chanel, Chanel's she do what she do. Chanel said uh Juan, um, Dee Dee. Um, other people. How, how? What was the approach when the city came out? How how was people receptive in the list? That list, uh, that list was funny. It was like all fun and games for me. You yeah, know? it was funny, but it was like real personal for a lot of people. Like that you, shit, I saw people arguing and like <laughs> all type of shit. Dogface posted they had he had an uproar on his page. I was like, that was like a. a that was a uh, that was a touchy moment in the show. It's like the motherfucker uh, managers and execs turned to the rappers. Niggas <laughs> upset about that shit. Niggas wanted to pull up all type of shit. That was like a uh, that was a sense of sorry for people. I guess when you number one, it really don't matter. It don't matter. You just sit back and kick your yeah, feet up. Was just, I wouldn't care where I was on that list. I know. I know we do. Like we didn't. We didn't birth into a lot of shit here. So yeah, I don't really be tripping. Like right now, like what are we not a part of here right now? That's going crazy. Uh, that's true. So we brought the first label here to the first uh, company here workshop. So with Dan Gilbert and a bunch of other people last year, so that we started that here. Like, there's nothing going on around here that I'm we not a part of between me and Pootie. So well, I'm happy where we at, what we got going on, and me, Pootie, Juan, and we all in the same circle. Of, so. Like you can ask anybody. I don't really know. Like everybody do what they do, but I just know what we do. I don't really focus on what nobody else doing. It ain't that deep. It's part. Of, it's about the culture. As long as you're doing your part, it don't really matter. As the niggas behind the camera, I mean, the niggas behind the scenes don't get the the credit anyway. So yeah. why why the fuck anybody care? It's all about the rappers. Rather, if it's good, it's, it's the rappers' fault. If it's bad, it's the managers, execs, and label head fault. So. Yeah. Why do you motherfuckers even take this shit so serious? I don't really know. The social media is the year of the celebrity managers and the celebrity execs. You feel like it's celebrity managers? They want to compete, get the shine like the artists now. You think so? I see it a lot. Name me, name some. No, I ain't going to do that. No, 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 you can't do that. You can't ask me these questions. You can't ask me these questions and then back off. You can't. You can't do that now. We can't do that. So yeah, he, he was a celebrity. He started it. Who? And that's what should ignite. P Diddy started that. But like, shout out to my guy Rainwater, Mo Three manager. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. When Mark at the Mo Three, being behind the scene, and Mo Three got killed, they and, put him on the forefront. Huh? Put him up more on the forefront. Yeah, but he, he had to do it because he learned, like, man, it can happen to another artist. And instead of people not knowing who I am, I have to start over. I can build people off of who I am now. Yeah, that works. But people know me from. Um, People know me before music. Yeah. I had a name in, in, in the street before music, so. Gotcha. And me and my family. So it was like, that's different for me and what I got going on. That's where like the names and all that shit come from. We know if we're doing a lot of shit in the city. Gotcha. So I don't really think it's like celebrity managers. Who are the celebrity managers here? QC. Here? Celebrity manager. Yeah. QC is a celebrity manager. Nah, but here in, in Detroit? What do you think? Lost a lot. Detroit, overall, in the music business, you have managers who have rejected themselves in the forefront past their artists. I mean, Wack 100 bigger than damn near Blueface now. Yeah, that's different, though. That's like a different But I'm saying, thing. like, with the social, using social media to kind of, because like you said, you was already verify who you were. 
without social media. And I'm not a manager, so. Oh, well, I'm, I'm just saying execs. People are using, they got social media now and who would normally be behind the scenes. I just can manage. Huh? I just can manage. I'm not really a manager at all. Got you. But I tell you what, man, I appreciate you sitting down with me. No, I want to ask you some questions. I can oh, go ask ahead. You. Let's go. No. Ask me a question. Can no, we got to know. Somebody else is coming. Where they at? Bring they them in. Try them to come in. They, come. they can what come they in. Don't. Go ahead. You, you got some see questions. Y'all. See, that's, so that's what I be saying. Me. You see what I'm saying? They want to ask me all the crazy yeah. ass questions. And then no. when it's time to flip the switch, now I can't ask no questions. Go, go ahead. Give, give me your top three questions. Go ahead. Do you think Sada fell off? A fell off is hard. I feel like his presence isn't as big as it was, but I think that could be a couple of factors. I don't think his talent could be him losing his first Instagram page. That could impact him. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Um, like you said, he was going through shit. His pops passing away. I think maybe that Twitter shit could have impacted him. So I think it's very. I really didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah. So I don't think it has nothing to do with his talent. I think it's just situations outside of him. And then, like, like niggas on the side of getting up in age as far as, like, the people seeing they've been seeing them for a long time. It's like all the new rappers is, like, 16, 17, 18, 21, 23, 22. Like, it's a new wave of artists, too. So are you saying Sada is not a legacy act? Hmm? Is he now a legacy act? Nah, I wouldn't say that. That's like payroll. Like, payroll is yeah. always around, but it's like, it's payroll. Like, yeah. Even the young, like, payroll not even old, but niggas, the young kids, like, who the fuck is a payroll? Like, who the fuck is... Team Eastside or all these other people that came before they don't know no better. Yeah. So it's like to them, they just look at them as like being old, but them niggas are still young. Yeah. They still relevant in the culture. They still do what they do. Because everybody got to think, kids is 12, 13, 14. They want to just, all they want to hear is somebody getting smoked all day. And it's true. And it's true. like the young niggas, all they talk about is getting killed or is annoying. And like social media lets you know what goes on in the city. So a lot of these kids know what's going on with these niggas in the city that rap. That's yeah, young, that people getting killed and shot and all that shit. So people know what's going on. So that fuels them liking them okay. at the same time. Cause that's what this, that's what it's really about. What's your next question? <sighs> How you feel about the TN Skiller thing? What was your honest opinion and thought about it when you saw it? No. When I, when, I mean, when I first saw it, I was, my first question is how? Like, I had so many questions. I guess one, because I didn't see Sada as present and then see all of a sudden Skiller with T Grizzly, I was trying to figure out like how oh, what's going on that this happened. Mm. So that was my only thing. But when I saw um T Grizzly on, I forgot, I'm not T Grizzly, but Sada just did an interview with Lando. Mm-hmm. He kind of just explained it recently. He was like, bro, whatever I got going on, Skiller can do whatever he wants, man. I want him to win. Like that's still my brother and that's love. And I thought that was dope. I think that's evolution, you know what I'm saying, of the game, because so much everywhere outside of Detroit, I can say, everybody's on that Chicago op shit. You you work with this side, you can't work with them. And to see, like, side of saying, like, bro, I don't care about that shit, dude. Skill do your thing. That's real love. Yeah, I don't believe in stopping niggas' money. Yeah. Like, people, I, it's a lot, in music, you do people, you don't like your music all the time. It's a lot of shit that people I don't really deal with, like, personally. Yeah. Cause a lot of rappers is fake, but they call from my producers and all that and feature. I don't stop niggas money. I don't believe in that. I clear, I clear niggas songs all that. I don't care. Yeah. Have hey, you ever tried to blackball somebody? Me? Yeah. No, I'd rather just see you in person. God damn shit sure tonight. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in black. I don't for what? Like bro, you should see his eyes when he say this shit. It, it, it turns different. Yeah, I really rather just, I rather just bump into you. Mm. That's cool. Cause yeah, it's, 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 we all can. Everybody, everybody got families. Everybody need to make their money. Yeah, you don't stop nobody money. It's real. Anymore? That's a, well, I got a bunch of new artists too. This is one of my artists too. Tommy remain real. Tommy want to jump in the camera and just say Tommy what up? Camera. Peace to the gods. This is remain real. Tommy man. Uh, what was your question? You don't know say. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Like man, what make you unique as an artist and what you got coming up? Um, yeah, like Nick was saying, man, I'm a five percenter. Um, I'm a vegan. So, you know, I just be really in my own lane for real, for real. I do my own thing. Gotcha. Um, so yeah. Fruits and water, you know, watermelons and shit, alkaline yeah. water. Yeah, it be it's more than that though. I still eat the same things. Like yeah. anything you eat, I probably eat the vegan version of it though, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So, like it. when you a vegan, bro, people be thinking like you gotta compromise a lot of shit. You that's feel exactly me? how I feel. Yeah. And right it's like now. it is, but like that's what anything, you feel me? You gotta but look at everything and figure out does yeah. dextrochlorohydrate 
equals a, a, a animal product. I ain't got that time. Yeah. <coughs> no, but I mean, it's a little app, bro. I'm gonna put you here. Try Yuka. You feel me? You can scan the little barcode, everything that's in there pop up for you. Feel how, me? How, how has vegan made your life better? Um, way better, actually. It got my thinking more clear. Mm. Um, I got more energy. You feel me? I just feel better. So, uh, you know. It's cool. And you're gonna be vegan forever. Yeah, probably. So I ain't gonna fit. I've been seven years now, so ain't no yeah. point in me going back. No, that's the point. Me, and you ain't. Once never. you know what you know, you feel me. So in the you seven sure. years, you ain't like slipped up. No, hell no. Not even. Not even, not even a little bit. Uh-huh. Okay, man. More power to you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hey, man. talk about the project real quick. Um, yeah, man. Like I said, I got. Um, I got. I'm with the circle, and I'm with Art Baron. So me and. Um, Picasso, R.B. and Picasso. We got a project coming out called Tommy Picasso. Okay. Yeah, y'all. Yep. And I got an EP dropping called Eastside Love Story, something for the females, you know. Yeah. You gonna, you on something special, bro. You on something different. That's dope. Yeah, true indeed. I appreciate it. Hey, man. Well, peace, God. Peace to the God. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shit like that. Yeah. We got the hope, man. If you see anybody in the city saying peace to the guys, man, you know it was me. Nick, I appreciate you, bro. Hey, shout out to Danny, D-Girl, Putting this together for me, man. You pulling up, blessing nah, me. Pull up. Coming from your high place down to a low place to nah, a regular what's that? man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a regular nigga. I don't be. A, I'm not no like. I'm too good for nobody. Everybody call my phone. Well, I'm gonna put that to the test. Next time we gotta go to a hockey game. If you don't I want to go up, to a hockey game. I just ain't got, made a chance to go. go Is man. it cold in there when you go? Yeah, yeah, it's cold. It's cool. It's cool. It's not freezing, ain't you? Straight. Oh yeah, get some uh, beers or some shit. I'm a regular nigga. Like nigga, to see me, I'll be by myself. Or I don't. I'm not one of them people. I'm like a regular nigga. I don't look at it like that. I talk to regular people, do regular shit. Until somebody, until you need to pull up and see a person. In person. Uh, that's just like a person. That's just like you. That's like somebody do something to you. You're not gonna or somebody around. You're not gonna respond to it. I'm, I'm, just, friend, a, I'm just. I'm friendly. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm like. I'm. It was I, my fault. I'm misunderstood. I just don't talk to people that's not, I don't got to be talking to. I stay to myself. I'm quiet. He'll tell you, I don't really talk to people. I don't know. I don't do nothing. I stay to myself. I'm yeah. like this all the time. And so I don't need to be like this all the time. Oh, man. I got an album coming out this month. Uh, God Best of Circle. All my artists on there. Skilla, Nook, Traco, Bino, Peasy, O3 Greedo, Wally the Sensei, Him, Perel, Lowski. PZ, Vezo, Taby, Baby Money. Um, you got the whole city on there. Yeah, I, I got. I got. I probably gonna have the best album of the year, dinner. Yeah, I got some crazy records on my trip. Nook got an album coming out this month. Draco got a solo album. Bino got a solo album. Skiller got a deluxe coming out. The controversy tape out now with T and Skiller. Um. Pro got a solo tape. Ro got a solo tape. Ro and Nook got a tape. I'm missing somebody. Yeah, he got one. Um, Shred Gang back together. They got a tape coming out. Um, Horse got some stuff coming out. Uh, oh, uh, Quiz on my tape. Uh, Horse H1 on my tape. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on. We got a lot of stuff coming up. Sada on my tape. 